Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Marco. Thank you also, Paolo, for um, accepting to postpone the questions. Okay, let me share the screen. Um, all right, um, it's going to be a long presentation, but I'll make it short since I have um, another meeting uh, run in a few minutes. Um, so uh, just uh, let me know if you see my screen uh, before going forward. Yes, yes. All right. Um, so uh, thanks again for uh, inviting um, to this interesting event. Um, what I'm going to present is um, um, the implication of AI for a specific uh, topic that everybody now is caring um, and is working on is um, social good in the broader sense. But before uh, giving a, an example of what uh, we mean as a social good, let's uh, first frame what we mean as AI. And I used to um, collect um, a statement uh, published by Rasa and Norwig, considered among the fathers of the recent AI, that says uh, it's the study of agents that receive percepts from the environment and perform actions. In the sense that um, AI now is about um, perceiving what is around us, as we humans have been the, the world, and also trying to perform um, some sort of human intelligence in a very specific and narrow way, we will see how. So we are all aware about the value of AI. Um, a recent publication by McKinsey and, Co and Company have stated that by 2030, AI is going to generate $13 trillion actually boosting uh, the GDP, uh, the GDP uh, overall of 1.2. And uh, this uh, picture was taken uh, um, three years ago so far, before even the pandemic, I would even uh, um, think that now uh, these numbers should be revised. Um, and at the time that they made the picture, um, they even said that um, uh, if we assume companies that have already gone digitized, even those, uh, they can improve their performance or improve uh, the capability of making business and serving customers. It's interesting to see how much they could do that. Even the travel industry that is highly digitized since the early days of uh, the industry, they can even boost more than 100% of their capability. And it's another interesting chart here, this bar that you can see in the middle of the, the slide, it says that um, uh, for um, the 100% of all uh, um, interest uh, and uh, addressed companies, um, more than 30%, they can actually um, generate value in a manner that without AI, they couldn't do it. It's actually an interesting message, this one. So AI is not just an improving or something that will generate more than what they have already, but they can even enable new value. This interesting message. So at the end, by 2030, 70% will have adopted AI solutions. So what about other industries? Um, nowadays, it's hard to think about any industry where we don't see any AI applied. So why now then? Um, as we have seen uh, in the previous presentations, um, AI is around since the mid of last century. But now um, we have uh, these four um, elements that they put together in such um, a manner so that we have a lot of progress in algorithms for data representation learning. We have the culture of storing curated data. We also now have computer machineries able to process high volume of data in a shorter time. And in, in particular, a boost, uh, Nexent Accelerator has been the first commercial applications that actually show AI can work. And we got addicted about that. So that we increased the expectations and we fueled um, this pipe. So uh, we said at the beginning, Russell Norwig said, uh, any agent that can receive percepts and they do actions. Well, what sort of actions? Anything that can require from us one second of thought. And this is a statement um, given by Andrew and Jane in 2018 and still applies so far. Uh, what AI cannot do? Well, um, 
writing a coherent and topping innovative creative thesis yet um, i'm sure all of you is now wondering what about gdp gpt3 and that got um, quite popular recently well um it's certainly a first step forward uh, but still it's uh highly based on what um, GPT-3 uh, has seen and the experiences as collected. Nothing about uh, the process of creation as a human being is used to. So uh, taking a picture of AI, um, we can uh, certainly see two branches, the narrow intelligence as uh, Norwig and Russell uh, opposed in 2010, and the general intelligence, the intelligence that can actually be compared and uh, relate with human beings. So now, today, we are near halfway to the general intelligence as GPT-3 has um, presented uh, quite recently. So um, this is the vision that we usually bring in the projects where we work. Um, the AI that is uh, designed and um, applied for making humans better humans, because it can bring more evidences, reason further, uh, help to make our choices and improve the life of all species in, on this planet. Um, we know that AI is a um, very broad term. There are several tools. Some of those have been mentioned already. I wouldn't go too much into the details, but just uh, such a chart for explaining the interplay. We have heard data science. We know AI. We know machine learning. We know deep learning. Well, all of this is in a big pot. Uh, there are some overlaps. So for instance, data science overlaps with the uh, AI because it uh, actually develops software, but at the same time also develops analytics, slides, and charts. While AI is based on software uh, and the techniques are, as we mentioned, um, as we heard from the previous uh, presentations, um, machine learning, deep learning with neural nets, um, knowledge graphs also quite uh, important. Um, so what is the take home message just for, you know, uh, the broader message? AI tools are utilized to create technologies. That's an important message. And this technology is used for sensing the world as we know it, for producing ma mainly nowadays language and vision capabilities, offering mm, personalized experiences. I I'm sure Netflix, <laughs> um, Amazon, you know, uh, this is the sort of personali uh, personalized experiences that uh, we refer here. So now the, the point is AI in public services. That uh, was uh, a leading uh, concept that we brought in the work in Easy Rights. So uh, initially we started to explore what uh, has been already published and discussed. And there is this interesting report published last year uh, mm, from the JRC, um, it says that um, Europe is moving, uh, it's actually pushing a lot to AI, but with an important message. It's going to be a trusted AI based on truly European ethical and societal values, borrowed from the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. So basically, we are shaping as European citizens um, an AI that can uh, live with us and respect all the species on the um, uh, Europe uh, perimeter, Europe, um, um, uh, yeah, United Nations. Um, so um, what we have seen from uh, um, uh, such uh, a report, we have seen uh, a shift uh, of AI um, concerning governments, because so far governments acted as regulators. And this is what we have seen from many technologies. And uh, in particular, recently, GDPR was an excellent example. Governments are like um, doing a step back, trying to make a picture and regulate uh, different actions. Well, with, with the eye, something is changing. I actually, I would even say has changed because governments started to become users for delivering interesting services to customers, namely citizens. Um, this is another interesting uh, chart um, available in the report I mentioned. And the first line uh, lists uh, a project, an initiative 
um, presented earlier by Colin. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, interesting to see this stuff. Uh, well, it's computer vision and identity recognition for uh, farming um, and satellite data. We also have a, a lot of other uh, interesting uh, um, uh, AI applications, mainly for um, either uh, creating um, um, a more human uh, sort of um, um, some sort of communication with uh, the offices and uh, providing uh, improvements to the current information systems at disposal in the different countries. And this actually wraps up what I just mentioned. Chatbots and digital assistants went quite viral uh, through the different governments. But at the same time, uh, we have seen also the spreading of intelligent database predictions and simulation through recognition, such as the satellite um, images, uh, as Collins presented. Well, um, we, we posed the question of what about uh, migrants and in particular social inclusion. Um, the idea was uh, indeed enabling uh, people who arrive in a new country to get um, involved in public society. This is of course a very hard um, and uh, well, I, I would just um, say a complex concept to apply because it requires um, numerous um, um, dots to be aligned all together. In particular, the person who arrives needs to understand the knowledge. And understanding the knowledge um, most likely means uh, getting up to speed to the culture, get up to speed um, to um, the language of the host country. Um, so that um, this is a typical example that we have started to, to work on. It's the migrant who's looking for a job. Um, and so he, she first looks for the necessary information and documents in order to apply for the job and be able to handle an interview. So we understand that uh, this is very contextual based. Uh, such an application depends on the country where she, he arrives and we know it. Um, most of us uh, have been uh, abroad and we know that this is a typical uh, process to handle. So, um, however, he or she would need the necessary understanding of the language and the lexicon utilized in the job uh, in order to be able to hold an interview. Likewise, also being able to speak in a comprehensible manner. So this is the use case that was formulated uh, at the beginning of such um, a European uh, initiative. And so that we, we came up with uh, uh, such a claim that is uh, backed up by uh, a technology that uh, I will uh, give you an introduction briefly in the following slide. So the claim is an intelligence system that generates automatically easy instructions to migrants so that when he or she arrives, she knows, he knows what, where, what to do, where to do and how to do for accessing the service. And then also topic specific course generator relying on automated technologies for language processing, supporting the learning of uh, the specific um, uh, knowledge uh, needed for instance to access the job and also followed by pronunciation exercises. So all of this is uh, the contribution of three technical partners into this project and in particular links um, is focused on uh, generating automatically easy instructions to migrants. So now think about um, uh, what is about uh, bureaucracy in Europe, all over Europe, uh, from uh, Greece, Italy, um, Spain, uh, UK even, uh, because we have a, um, a UK uh, partner as well involved in this project. It's all the same story, um, Bibles, lengthy, verbose, uh, uh, hard even to understand for a mother tongue. So the challenge is, uh, we know, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, understanding the knowledge in a comprehensible and actionable fashion. So we as a links, we are developing a, a tool based on AI, in particular NLP, that basically takes those Bibles, uh, chunks them into uh, portions, those portions are the steps and for each step we identify um, pivotal information such as uh, what is about the step, where to do 
in order to access the service, when to do and how, meaning uh, documents and the procedures in order to get, uh, to achieve that step. So the lesson learned, uh, it's still learning since it's um, an ongoing project, but uh, this is the first picture of the lesson learned. We can simplify bureaucracy by addressing one of the most uh, painful pillars of it, so verbose and complex cross procedures. Um, and this is, uh, as you can see, we have basically reverted uh, how we thought uh, government can be involved or can utilize AI, not just as a regulator, but even as a um, uh, um, user of AI in order to provide a better service. Um, conclusions, uh, we know that AI is big value nowadays, uh, it's a buzzword, um, but beyond the buzzword, there are some practical and pragmatic values being discovered. So nowadays, AI is not yet general, it's, it's a long way in order to get uh, general AI, but still, it can automate one second of thought, and in particular, if we apply such, um, uh, such an idea of AI, we can certainly help um, public services and governments in order to provide um, something more impactful to uh, citizens and users in general. Um, and this is a success story that uh, is about easy rights. So please, uh, if you're interested, uh, go to the website and um, ping me for any questions so that I will uh, uh, detail you everything else. So that's all. Um,